wishes and apologies. And he's asked me to introduce a good friend of mine and an architect who has been associated with the Architectural Association on and off since the early 1970s. I should explain who I am. I'm Dennis Sharp. I used to be senior lecturer here in arts and history and also the editor of the A Quarterly for as many years as I care to forget. Um, and it was in the A Quarterly that um, we first started a series which was dealing with the idea of community development, the relationship between the designer and the client and the customer and the user. And what we became very interested in was not only the work of rationalists like Nick Harbrocken, who had set out a support system for the rationalization of the housing program, but the more informal, organic, expressive interests that there were growing up in various parts of Europe and the United States in the way particularly housing, accommodation, could be predicted on the basis of user requirements. And those of you who know Lucien Kroll's work will remember the famous, incredibly famous scheme now at Le Meme, or the Le Meme scheme at Woloe in Brussels for the University of Louvain in Brussels, which was a group of buildings for the medical faculty, which was a response to user requirements. And the building was built up in terms of the forms, in terms of the materials, in terms of the spaces, in relation to the way people wanted to use those spaces and to live in those spaces and to actually. Of course, it was completely against the grain. If you, we were thinking of the deterioration of modernism in that period, what we would see was, would be the devaluation of the modernist ideas of the 20s and 30s, and indeed possibly of the 40s, in, into a kind of commercial, totally uninteresting, unindividualistic architecture. And what Kroll did was to move into that, that battlefield and try and find solutions to the problem of reorientating that housing providing formulas for dealing with that housing, which has been pursued now for many, many years in France, in Belgium, in Holland, and so on. But of course, at that time, it was an antagonistic act. We were talking as we were coming up here in the car earlier today about center and center right. I think this was absolutely a far left act. It was an act for the people, by the people, through the designer. And of course, he was immediately sacked. Um, and he was sacked again, if I remember rightly, later, later in the same decade for uh, pursuing a similar sort of aim. We're not, I don't think, I haven't, I haven't been briefed very carefully about the subject of today's talk, but I don't think we're going to be talking so much about that. We're going to be talking about wider contexts. And this is a wider context of Lucien Kroll's more recent work in the application of these fundamental principles these ideas, if you like, these prototypical notions I into the broad context of urban design, urban planning, place, city, town, community, from the general, and you will love this, is it? from the general to the particular, from the broad to the very particularization of the, of, of the idea. And that brings me to just say something in parenthesis. Lucien Kroll will give a lecture himself, this famous architect from Belgium, but in the front row we have Madame Kroll, who is a garden architect, a landscaper, a gardener, in the real sense of the word, a gardener with brown hands, ready to go into the soil and to produce beautiful things in areas quite often that husband Lucien Kroll has created. And I'm opening tonight with the president of the Landscape Art and Architecture Group in my own gallery, the Volume Gallery over in Woven Walk, an exhibition of the work of Simone Kroll, a series of collaged photographs. We've actually tried to create a garden with inside the gallery. Do come and see it if you're available tonight. There's a private opening of Anisage at um, 6.30, and tomorrow it will be open to the public. So that's number 12, Woburn Walk. The work of Simone Kroll, supported in that case by her husband, Lucien Kroll, who will now give you his lecture. Euh, bonjour.
Uh, je continue en français Non. 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 Uh, thank you, Dennis. You have done the first part of my lecture. <laughs> I will do the second, because you said very friendly things about, about us. <coughs> uh, no. I should like to say some words, not about philosophy, don't worry. I don't have an English enough, strong enough for that. But on the jump between the 19th century and the 21, with something in between which is, generally speaking, ugly. Is, is it so? <coughs> in Barcelona once, I <coughs> uh, had to congratulate uh, our, our friend uh <coughs> Sir Norman Foster, uh, we, uh, he invited us very friendly and uh, he designed a communication center. The first thing that the communication center did was that all the electronic collapsed. So we had to communicate and not just to be victim of electronics. And I congratulate him, I had to make a speech just after his presentation saying that for me he was one of the greatest architects of the 19th century. He was astonished but he is English very calm and I explained that that was a century of all the great institutions, this <coughs> the, uh, the banks, the uh, world commerce, trade, the education system, the universities, the railroad, etc. And he is in that series. But now, by chance, we jump to century and we are at the 21st century. And we got rid of our superstition about technology. Because, well, it works and then. Uh, <coughs> but about soft sciences, just a remark. Uh, Psychology has 250 years of age, something like that. Uh, Philippe Pinel, the first who said that uh, between the, the ill person and his illness, madness, there is always some sort of a space which is accessible to the word. Uh, a century before Freud, then Freud came and realized that thing. Mm -hmm. and it, it's funny, but the architects read about that. They never practice that the question, what they call the, <coughs> uh, the play of the village, which is to invite, let us say, 12, uh, 15 people together with models and ask them to create a village. They have a, a, a set of materials, houses, a church, the mairie, uh, what else, Ra railroad, the station, etc. And they have to organize it. They have to discuss what to do with it. And that is a very instructive thing because they learn much about themselves. But <laughs> I should like that they built that village. I'm the first probably saying so. That thing disappeared certainly for one or two centuries, because people have no more any opportunity except self-help, do it yourself, uh, of calmly be a citizen and decide of the time planning of something, because you have so many specialists that are real good specialists, that's right. Psychiatry, nothing about architecture, even about the chaos and the order. Ilya Prigozhin, uh, that Nobel Prize, spoke about uh, the virtue of recreating a new order each time in the dead material, in the dead substances. And he finishes his book, first book, saying, what about the society when the atoms are sensible and intelligent people that has to be hundred times more complicated than just that mystery about the dead material. 
logic became fuzzy, good news, and complexity and ecology came. Ecology is, by the definition of 1868 something, uh, Hackel, Ernst Hackel, has defined that as being the science of the relations, nothing else. Well, I'm an architect, not a scientist. The relation between what and what about architecture and town planning is the relation with the user. It's always the last. So last that when an architecture is finished, the architect sent the photographer as soon as possible because the inhabitants will come and spoil the thing. So all the magazines I know are always desert, sterile, without any animal, probably no plants inside, and no inhabitants, but completely cold, like a, a refrigerator, inside a decoration. The, the, the inhabitant comes and put life inside that. That means disorder. Uh, ecology has been defined by uh, Felix Gattari, a French philosopher. I missed him a, a week because he, he died a week before I had to meet him. But he did write a thin book called The, the Three Ecologies, saying that the first ecology is the social one. I translate it very badly, but as an architect. The, the, the first is uh, about the third and the fourth world. And these people are in your back when you are designing something, no more, but gives you a bad conscience doing things. The second is psychologic. The second is mental ecology, he says. And at least for architects, it's what the architects impose, imposes to the users uh, the, the walls have an impact on the behavior of the, of the users, a terrible impact. And architects are not aware of that. I know naughty architectures and I know friendly architectures. Is that the question you, you, you discuss here in that uh, famous school? And practically, I mean, how to make a friendly architecture? That's the second. And the third is the physical ecology, that means the green engineering. Uh, what he says is that no step of these ecologies has the right to decide anything uh, without the two others. And an example, a living example now is that the green ecology, that the, the, the physical, the green in engineering, when it uh, uh, calculates alone the energy, for instance, it's absolutely vulgar because wasting energy or sparing energy is always merchandising the planet a little more by good things or bad things, doesn't matter, it's the money that... Well, uh, <coughs> well that's enough. I will uh, show you slides, I took them all, in order to explain with images, not words, because it's uh, more efficient. <laughs> Let, let's uh, let do that. Uh, uh. Yeah, I I always begin with these slides. These are the people. You are not astonished. They possess a culture, which is not exactly mine, but their own. They are all different. The naughty question is this. Are we allowed, forbidden, or encouraged to design identical houses for different families? You have time to answer that a century more, probably. The nature is the, the biggest, the most precise calculator about all the motives. I mean that the engineering 
despises the motives of weak energy because they are not calculatable. So they don't take account uh, of these low energy motives. And they are so innumerable that they are principal in the decision making and they are complex. So engineering is also is always sterilizing the thing and the nature constructs, builds the images, the three or four dimension things uh, by respecting every possible reason and balancing it. Uh, <coughs> uh, about time, uh, that is in uh, Castres, Le Nôtre, a garden within two or three centuries, it will be exactly the same. The time doesn't exist there, probably. It's a masterpiece and no moral situation or uh, opinion. And this is a hedge that in south of France, south of Nîmes, peasants have planted, as many others, to protect the fields from a dry wind. And, well, that's a vertical plane, which is a geometrical uh, miracle. And someone, some living person, gets through, the, through that wall in an opening that has been previewed. Uh, the philosopher Latour speaks about walls that you have to demolish to go through, here not. But that's a ceremony, and to feast that ceremony, probably the architecture is this here. To show to the outside people that something happens very important. This is not a city, even if the, the streets are designed by the truck and the crane, and they are all the same, industrialized, everyone is happy, and uh, the mayor knows exactly who is living where, and that's nothing. That's a nice landscape of Andalusia in Spain, when, where they grow uh, uh, strawberries guaranteed without taste, it's industry. And that's a silliness. Ah, that, that's a, a big, a, a big news here. Uh, that is the most ugly building that I have ever met. The Bauhaus, and it is so. It has such a power of repulsion, and sort of an electrostatic power of repulsion that. Even me, no one is capable to photograph the Bauhaus with an object which is not the Bauhaus. So, uh, on the other side of the street, a little farther, there is that school. It's two schools at uh, nearly 100 meters distance, and it's impossible to photograph them uh, together. And even all the photographs I have seen of the Bauhaus are just the object without anything around it. The world doesn't exist. That is the definition of an autism. It's uncurable. That's a joke. It's a building of uh, uh, one kilometer long in the outskirts of Rome. The name is Corviale. And it doesn't go <laughs> well, normally, it, it, but it's the pilgrimage place for many architects, modern, they say, architects. And that was so mighty in the evolution of rational architecture in Italy uh, that, that that was the great model. And uh, you had no right to criticize. But recently, last year, end of last year, I was invited in Rome at La Sapienza uh, to a, a meeting whose title was Should We Demolish the Corviari? They did understand something in Italy. <laughs> oh. Yes. That's approximately the rules that are taught in the schools, except here, naturally. Everything which is not forbidden is compulsory. There are some 
different arguments afterwards, but ne neglectable. Uh, no. Uh, I will call. That's it. It's, it's a guess. Where is the fascist? Well, don't, don't try. Uh, here, the eagle with the swastika is away for a moment. That's the airport of uh, Tempelhof in Berlin. Now, yes, uh, in Buenos Aires, that building is a university, a self-contained university. It's, it's so unbelievable that no one could find the architectural school, so the students had to put it title on it, because it has none, no sense to have a complex a university is the most complex machine in the world probably, and in such a, a wrapping it has no sense. Well, uh, here the motive is why should we uh, have windows if we don't have anything to speak with the neighbor? And this is not a street the street is a communication machine. This is a traffic machine, which is probably the contrary. An engineer structure that has been humanized by a tornado in America. Social houses with the price of the families and here, a much more civilized institu institution of social houses because every balustrade is different because the families are different. They learn something. <laughs> Prefabrication for social houses are perfect. The joints are very well done. The windows are tight. The roof is, and the, the matches really, and the, the inhabitants are growing fat, everyone is happy, and, I, and it rains less inside than outside, and I came back 20 years afterwards, and they were refurbished, received a green roof. <laughs> this is a crime against civilization, you know why. This is my thesis about town planning, about urban design. Uh, to the left there are uh, workers placed on an assembly line. They are fabricating meat out of grass. That's their job. It's a monotonous job. So they in automatically invented a plan town planning plan, which is the parallel. They are all in the same direction, except one here, which is probably the social assistant or cultural something. And recently I discovered two immigrants, two immigrants that disguise themselves in an assembly line worker. They are goats here. They're, they are in the same direction because they want to disguise as citizens. My motive is this, there are old ladies chatting, uh, ruminating, is that right? And to communicate, they are obliged to organize a complex plan, because in a file on a rank you can't chew together. If it doesn't go, you may demolish. That's the Pruitt and Igo scheme, I counted that they destroyed half a million square meter of social houses. The first one that was in 72 was imploded. You remember the photographs, terrible things where the building are collapsing inside themselves. That's also autism. That's modern architecture, very frankly. Uh, yes, a detail. Uh, Minoru Yamasaki is the architect of the Pruitt and Igo system and he didn't answer because they, they demolished it. He was also the architect of the Twin Towers in New York 
and the architect of uh, the Picasso Tower in, in Madrid. And 15 minutes later, the, the Picasso Tower was demolished by the ETA. He is an architect specialized in building to be demolished. If you have no opportunity to demolish, you may use cosmetic, which is al already a charity. So it's a Disney thing, land or I don't know what. And that's Bavaria. And well, Norway and Nepal are neighbors. Why not? It produces money, not geography. It's not negative. I have no negative opinion on anything. But this is the most positive thing because no one is tempted to criticize these objects. It's the Cathedral of saint Front in Périgueux, done with flowers. And this is a single family house with a window, uh, greens, a rabbit, another beast, and a green uh, roof again. Noth no one can be against this. But I have to sadly avow that the word concrete, reinforced concrete, became an insult. So we go farther. The brainwashing is approximately finished. And that is my friend Hundertwasser, who died months ago, which is a great loss. It's, these are social houses. They are more expensive than uh, ugly social houses but they last very much more and they have won two times the price of their construction by tourism in, Wien, in Vienna. Yeah. We live here, it's mixed used, we work and live and everything together and the facade are covered by ivy and Normally, it's a very good thermal insulation and a hygroscopic insulation also. It's not possible to get a, a drop of rain on the wall because it's protected. But I didn't see any engineer calculating that. And it flourishes for the same price. We build it with 14 other families. We organized the, the whole thing together. That's possible. Then I was hired by the Catholic University and that was a passionating uh, project for years. The, the client is these, but they are mercenaries between my clients and me. So the interpretation of these people are that. It's a personal interpretation, it's an urban architecture, it's a bet towards industry when industry is civilized. That means that industry doesn't impose an architecture to people. Uh, for instance, the whole thing, it's the alone building I know, which is built on a grid of 10 centimeters, preferences 30. And all the bearing parts are on one 30 uh, ribbon, and the infill are on another a 10. So it's always possible for industrialists that uh, the John Habarkin system, we followed it. Uh, an industrialist may fabricate cupboards, for instance, uh, of 99 centimeters, knowing that the reservation in the masonry is one meter one, always, except all the exceptions. And we were very uh, capable of finding many exceptions. It's necessary. So I was sacked, as Daddy said, and we reconcile afterwards. Seems a little ridiculous, but so. But I had nothing to do anymore uh, from the year 74, 75 in Belgium. So I was invited as a cultural refugee in Paris, and at competition. We won the first in Sergi Pontoise. That was the first time that I was in France as an architect, as a professional. <coughs> and we said, no inhabitants, no plan. We wait until, it's a long story. But the first phase was f 47 houses designed by certainly 
150 families because they came, they were not, but they left their traces on the place so that other came and continued, changed a little and enhanced and improved the thing. It's possible. Then we were charged on the other side of Paris in Marne Vallée of a research of three parts. The first was participation of the inhabitants, the second uh, <coughs> was open prefabrication and the third was computer added design in these years 81 or something computer were absolutely too expensive and the programs were a shame so we had a homemade program I, I can't read so I don't understand anything of that don't worry but uh, we had a program that was able to design architecture as we thought uh, the the prefabrication system we chose was a heavy concrete thing, thing uh, with 60 centimeters uh, modules that was so boring that we invited a wooden prefabrication system with the same coordination, mo modular co coordination to put one another. So it's uh, more variety and there is nothing t uh, twice repeated. In Holland we were also invited because we suffered in Belgium and then we had to transform an old building in a school and we discussed with the workers we asked them to demolish one part of the wall and when it was enough we said stop that's a historical ruin we don't move anything it's a sacred thing so it's much more living and by the way it's less expensive a technical school in Belfort where we followed a city plan instead of an institution plan. An institution plan is an autistic fat person sitting on the middle of the ground. A city plan is a cadre and decumanus at minimum, right angle or not, but a crossing somewhere, streets, etc. So that divided the, the 15,000 square meter of the technical school uh, into different uh, isle, islands different uh, blocks and each block had its material sets of color uh, name and specialty and we had the opportunity of inviting three different builders instead of one because the one is Bouig and it's impossible I go fast because I just have one aim which is to convince you that it's not it's banal to do that the school, primary school in Paris, Saint-Ouen, all the different materials possible for the same price and no more effort. With a computer it's easy to manipulate. We did build in Holland uh, social houses, uh, 120, and we had 250 different windows. It cost the same price, the, the machine are digital, what else? In Saint-Dizier, east of France, haute saône uh, we were asked to design 75 houses, or dwellings, within four different financing systems. All the other competitors of the, com the, the competition had four different areas for the financing, but it's not the bankers that are uh, destined to live there and I mixed everything so that during the jury there is also always a miracle in France they never decide without hearing you but that disappeared because of the common market nowadays the U European Union <coughs> and uh, uh, they asked me where is this in, in f financing and the B and the etc I, I lost it completely that's why we won in Freiburg in Breisgau, that's a civilized town, you know it. They asked us to uh, treat ecologically uh, 1,000 hectares of a big uh, domain uh, under uh, Freiburg in Breisgau. That was a place for a marsh to absorb the waters, the used waters of the, of the city. And there was a streetcar, we had to inscribe uh, three to four thousand 
houses, 80% social houses, and that's what we presented. The theme was water or drought, and we put everywhere water when it was useful or uh, friendly. And we, the jury he insulted us, <laughs> saying that we had no right to use so much water. Okay. But yeah, yeah, there is a river, and ma make a detour with the river is, is not anti-ecologic. And they said that I had no conscience because I designed all the social houses all different. Well, then we won a week afterwards in another competition with another jury but the same city of Freiburg. In Bordeaux, 150 dwellings, and we had we could make the, the difference between low level and high level. The, so, so that they seem to be parents, otherwise they seem to be enemies. Well, speaking about architecture all the time is dwelling. So that's views of the garden in Brussels that Simon made or let m make itself. Just to have a glimpse of it. Well, uh, we were asked in the Neth Netherlands, in Alphen and Rhein, to organize with a client, with an institution, uh, an, an experiment of 100 houses with uh, environmental um, ambitions. We chose nine architects to do the architecture, we did not. We disorganized them and we organized the, the layout, the, the, the urban design. And for me this is really important because we tried to observe how we know it, you know it also, how the people live. Uh, the a street is an element, a place is another element. A garden to the street is a third, a garden to a garden to four. Uh, uh, a street that, that expands in the center is an, another element. With 24 elements we could do something. So we disposed all these elements sentimentally with instinct, let us say, where we think it could be good there. And when they settled each element, we transformed the, 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 the borders, the limits, in order that they could be the same. And for instance, some piece of ground, I did not know to which it belonged, so the architects had to meet together to discuss that without me. That's subsidiarity. That's make, I, I'll come back to that. That, make, that makes that uh, the, the, the under person has the right to decide without the upper. A subsidiarity when Maastricht was, uh, <laughs> it was about Maastricht, it's uh, bottom up. The people of the first floor have to decide uh, normally, absolutely, of all the, the reason of, the, of their own problem. If it doesn't go, they may ha ask help to the second floor. If still it doesn't go to the third or fourth, the architect, the engineer, the administration, the king, the emperor, God, etc. But always help to decide. I am fond of uh, finding a, a, an urban design that should be uh, subsidiarity. That meant that each element, we call it components, because they have to compose with the, with the neighbors. Each element has its autonomy, let us say, its uh, conviction, and places itself randomly apparently, but with a sense, an underground sense of unity with the others who do the same. The landscape is done not at all by a a scheme, a form, which is uh, designed by some, someone else, but is the result of randomly installed people that are uh, polite, let us say. The inhabitants, well, we had a, a piece of water for the grey water, 
and they are themselves building their garden because the whole landscape is so in disorder that they are free to do it, otherwise not. It's impossible to hope that an architect should realize and made, made it realized such a habitable thing which just the in inhabitant, the unskilled person may do it. The aim is to design a, uh, the, the, the whole scheme so that this is possible and also the transformation. Certainly that was a living room be before. In Alençon we were invited to discuss with the population to improve uh, neighborhood because the inhabitants revolted against the continuation of the work. So the first thing they said that it was that the boulevard, which is the entrance of the, of the quarter, is too dangerous to first crossing. So hypocritically, I didn't propose electricity more, but uh, uh, hills. So we poured ground on the crossing, and that's it here. The, the crossing is there, so it's very dangerous now because you don't see w from where will come your murderer, uh, so that you you uh, drive very slowly and people can uh, sleep during the night. And uh, we were asked also to to uh, transform, to uh, show what we could do, transforming 11 apartments, and a flat roof is always a building ground that doesn't know that it is. So we we broke a little thing here and these are wooden houses that are perfect. The ground floor and the, uh, the second are occupied by offices. They needed an elevator, so the elevator is going up. In <coughs> uh, Genevilliers outskirt west of Paris, that's the situation. Uh, we were asked in a competition, we won the first thing, we discussed with the people, and we worked nine evenings, and they produced this, destroying one part of another building, a slab, they produced, and we, we, did, we uh, obeyed to all the details they proposed, but we, uh, we designed uh, uh, the model also. And finally, that, that was a Stalinist mairie in Genevilliers, and when they saw it, they said, we have been elected because we know what is good for the inhabitants. They don't know. So uh, away with that, I was sacked, and they decided to open another competition with other inhabitants. That Bertolt Brecht, who said, I don't remember where, that the people have lost the confidence of the government and the government had to change people and get another. That's it. Hellersdorf, east of East Berlin, uh, we had to improve uh, prefabricated social houses somewhere here. I don't know where exactly because it's so huge. The senator of Berlin wrote in a uh, in an int introduction text that in a former uh, communist eastern country they have built uh, 70 million dwellings prefabricated for uh, 170 million people suffering because they are all collapsing together. What to do? Demolish the whole thing? No. A little part of it, yes, but it doesn't change many things. But transform it with the inhabitants, that was our proposal, uh, was a solution possible. The traces of the inhabitants are the most important uh, motive. That's it everywhere. So we designed that. That is the present situation. But at the same time, we saw that someone painted a landscape on a public surface somewhere outside. So they have a project, even if it's forbidden. We might s hope that these projects are more real, given to an architect, given to a promoter, organized administratively, bureaucratically, and realized in the complexity of uh, the order, the disorder when they come. So it could be this after some years. You see, that's a spontaneous garden. 
or after 12 years could be this or after 20 could be that I didn't demolish nothing against the hole here because it was so uh, frigid but the rest we didn't demolish anything just add and add on another structure so that you forget the first structure as a Roman town, uh, Aachen for example where the Roman plan disappeared in the Gothic at the Middle Age uh, covering by buildings they said we, we, yeah, we designed uh, 50 components every uh, intervention is a component uh, and they said yes you show what, what to do with it so we designed that this is not a project this is an example alone and one <coughs> uh, tower of loggias collapsed and they asked us to design a new one we will not do the same because it collapses so uh, we, we designed a structure in concrete but with irregularities you know when you make a mistake and co a column is 20 centimeter to the right for, by mistake it doesn't matter so we had a rule for that then we designed uh, uh, apron how do you call that uh, for the Balkanese prefabricated and modular coordinated and we invited all the inhabitants of the staircase and we made this and they made that it's easy when you ask it but they have no money for that and probably no guts also to to do the job in Montbéliard, east of France, where the, fact, the Peugeot f cars factory are, uh, it's terrible because suddenly 10,000 workers come, they have to build, and uh, they, they are sacked. But 2,500 come, but they don't have the right to uh, have the same surface, etc. So this was empty for 10 years, this also, but we decided, the client and us, to save the building. <laughs> not because it's friendly but just because it was built so it became that the, uh, the plan they had already des destroyed other buildings there so we proposed a, p a little place village place of 16 houses naturally all different different families and the tower we proposed the gothic hat but it didn't, it didn't work so the 16 are there, the tower is here, they are as different as possible and we try to f fill the place with everything possible and we need stories for that. Let us say someone is here, there is a bench to read your newspaper, there is two l uh, a, a light here, two trees, the other is there and when it's dark you continue to read it and when you are tired you have a paper basket there everything is linked it's not a fairy tale we need it we need that o otherwise we have a list anonymous and just furnish just deliver the thing so it was my birthday and Simone made the cake so <laughs> we ate the social houses and how it is done you see the windows are uh, transformed in, uh, uh, in, in, in order to respect the new use of the spaces everything has changed we gave two bedrooms to the second floor uh, to the neighbor and we that's the building who stops here and we added that saying we always do that so they believed it and that's a, 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 the colors show that the buildings, the, the plants have, have been uh, changed, all of them, to the street. And that's the morality, that's before and that's after. You see, the, the tree is the same. It costs between 50% of a new building and 75% of a new building in principle it's a good business but the financing are different different from re refurbishing 
or building new construction, so they decided never to do it again. The house of uh, the environment in Belfort, these are solar chimneys. When it's hot, the hot air goes out. He knows the job. The last thing we realized was a technical school in the north of France, North Pas-de-Calais, the region, uh, <coughs> 12,500 square meters, following a new French procedure called High Environmental Quality, HQE, HQE which is a, a miracle because it's holistic, as people said in 68. No, we had 67 duties, different items to be uh, solved, and no item had the possibility or the right to be solved alone, without all the others. And it's a, it's a bureaucratic uh, procedure, so it works. Uh, <coughs> The natural light, an association between the builder and the architects and engineers proposed the competition. We won with the price and the place to sign. Uh, <coughs> so we were motivated to, to do the job together. Uh, we bet the maximum uh, natural light that is the uh, 3.5 uh, percent between outside and inside, but it's logarithmic. It doesn't mean anything, but it's a maximum. Without beam, with when for a classroom you uh, have no facade at all, it's not enough. You, have, you need a rear light. So every little item of help reflects on the ground. Uh, the sun is going until these are the point difficult. A window here. Uh, to the south, uh, you have, have a protection, light shelves, bris soleil, etc. And this is completely uh, glazed, so that hot air is coming there. Hot air is coming from the outside. In a Canadian trench, we win or lose two or three degrees, which is much for the whole year. Then it's pushed inside the class, outside in the corridor, gathers hot, sucked here in an exchange, that's the maximum of uh, uh, economy of energy for the, for the ventilation. So these are the large shells, you see how useful they are, and this is the, the holes that we had to uh, uh, design to have the lights on the strate strategic points where necessary. We chose all the possible materials that has uh, signification, let us say, uh, uh, these cedar uh, uh, materials, planks, uh, are for the communication uh, functions, uh, the uh, multi-purpose things, and this is the Tower of the Arts, music, drawings, etc. And uh, uh, stainless steel for the administration, that's symbolic. That's it. With all m mix, mixes that possible, in, inside and outside the restaurant, uh, which m uh, movemented uh, a, a formed ceiling because of acoustic and psychology, eating on, under a flat Ceiling is disagreeable. That's a sort of imitation of an old Italian Alpine village. And that's the industrial part of the school, the technical uh, uh, part. And I hope that the, pup that the students that uh, will be formed there re will refuse the industry as generally is uh, designed. The result you don't anal analysis the natural light, the, l the artificial light is 50% 50, uh, <coughs> 50 economy spare, uh, insulation, the windows, heating, 
and the electricity CO2, NOx, etc., is approximately, and w the waters are uh, collected from the rain and conducted here. You don't see, but they are goldfishes. It's the same climate. Oh no. Uh, uh, a meeting uh, with a big model in the Netherlands to design something. Something else is what we are busy now is in the Dordrecht. That's the landscape nowadays. The, the apartments are perfect. It's quite clear, clean. Uh, people are, uh, have good apartments. They are happy, etc. But they are flying away because it's too dull outside the apartments. And the rich are replaced by poor, that are replaced by Indonesian, that are replaced by Suriname, that are replaced by Moluk, that are replaced by drug, which is replaced by crime within 10 years. Everyone knows it. So they say the maximum of uh, investment is a good investment. We needed inhabitants. They are touring my model. And we said that uh, <coughs> we have we, well, they say 75 meters is impossible to live nowadays. The min minimum is 120, 150. So everything is bigger than what it was. And <coughs> the answer is that the client sells, may sell the apartment, just the bearing parts, the walls, the electric, el electricity, gas, etc., without any installation inside and the, the buyer may do it, it themselves. So I uh, enhanced that to the facade, this is sort of furniture, because it's uh, nailed to the, to the structure, and I want them to choose the facade also and the materials of the facade. Sometimes two levels, sometimes one, uh, different materials. This is not a chaos. This is subsidiarity architecture. That means that for politicians it's bottom up, for architects it's inside out. So what the people are, well, uh, for instance here, designing each one independently is a new, an, an original different way of life inside. And I bet without knowing what they do that putting all these one on upon the other creates a harmony. I don't <coughs> I don't kidding. I'm not kidding. It creates a sort of a harm with inside laws. Instead of an architect's harmony, which is a harmony from the artificial response to the inside, but the repetition, etc., is in, in chaos is not uh, dangerous. Let design in Italy by the administration, the teachers, and the children. That produces that. We copy it. An exhibition of the same chaos we had in Brussels, where the most important thing was not seeable, no, not visible, that was that that was not possible in that sort of structure and in the photographic documents that we showed, it was not possible to a, an arrogant architecture to be to enter. The absence of arrogance had an, in, an impact on the on the visitors also. That is, for me, extremely important. That's Mexico. And they are all building themselves because they, are, they have no money. That's shanty towns. They organize the living, the housing, they organize the commerce, everything spontaneously without any money. Uh, the food, industrial food, let us say, uh, the escape, escape uh, stair, etc. And that is exactly what we are dreaming of. Everyone is in independent and tries to survive with a fantastic energy. I don't want to, uh, to uh, say that it's a poor thing, it's a thing just. Compassion is awful, it's always 15 degrees angle from up to down. Uh, let us speak about empathy, which is horizontal. 
let us say it's just gesture, not, n not romanticism. They have a sense of survival and organizing the space, which is fantastic. And each one has its, its own project, and altogether that makes a town planning, which is very precious. The religion, the feast, everything is doing by itself. And the last photographs are also a garden of Simon in France, where in uh, the region of La Loire, the international exhibition of garden in uh, uh, Chaumont sur Loire invited her to design a garden. First, she refused, saying a garden needs ten, ten years to be, not one, not some some months and then away. But finally, she accepted. Came with her own plants, with her weeds, condiments, edible vegetable salads, etc., and planted all that with all the weeds of the region mixed, and that creates the cathedral effects for nothing. And that is the, the castle. <coughs> and that's a nice garden when it's crowded because people enter and they begin to discuss. They don't move anymore. And the phytosociology to be patent is that she knows what plants are uh, attracting the insects from the cabbage and how to avoid completely uh, polluting uh, improvements. And this is that before there was a tree that had been chopped and I asked to keep that as a pavement so people on rubble suddenly are on wood and they ask what's that and I may propose the, the degree zero of history. I say there was a tree, that's enough. There's, this, there's this a link and they, they themselves go th themselves uh, farther. And the ancients which is also the exit, is this. This is not a geometrical form. It's a shoulder, it's the head, the other shoulder, and covered by the Belle du Jour. And too narrow to allow two persons together to, to go through. So they have to be polite. Otherwise, it's a collision and a conflict. So they have to, s to look each other in the face to speak. And that forbids the ancients of... Uh, uh, policemen on the horse and of engineers that are too cubic and that's finished yeah I'm in time Well, if, if you still have questions, I may answer. But I, I have no, no policy against the car because it's, uh, it's an, uh, I, we, we have to do with, but I have a, let us say, a naughty attitude. I consider that as a cybernetic system. That means that always you have the maximum cars for those circumstances. That means that he, if you uh, enhance, you have bigger possibilities for the car, you just have more car, but always jammed a maximum. Then, if you have less possibility, you have always the cars, always jammed, but a uh, little uh, less cars than, than before. So, you, you may, the administration has, has not the duty of giving roads and systems for let us say 15% of the population. They have a duty for the four, to 85 normally. So if they consider that as a cybernetic, you know, the, the candle, the flame, uh, it's not room. Huh? And the car also, if you diminish that slowly, but if you improve the roads, you are, lo you are lost. That's the alone de self-defense that we have. 
if the car is unhappy, everything is okay. But I have a question. Uh, do you do such things in your school? I didn't see, because I, I don't know. I come here every 25 years, remember. <laughs> Yeah. What comes out here and what can happen to me was that the ticket signing for the people who need to do the ticket for the people. Well, I don't say anything, you know, I just keep up. Now, what I felt uh, uh, that this talk and your slides came out is that the extreme social connotation you have and that the uh, the thought process for the uh, giving everything for the for the personalization of the per of a person the individual as compared complete mass but <coughs> we we know the mass now for 50 years and uh, 70 million prefabricated houses doesn't produce anything civilization. So we consider the individual as a unit and as typology of citizens. Type, well, people are agoraphobe or claustrophobe. They like open or closed spaces. They like red or green. Uh, they are left hand or right hand. They, are, they have many differences, much more than three of them. I don't know any urban design for them. That's a help that the inhabitants may give to the, to the urban designer, uh, a help so that he gets a, 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 a possibility of having complexity. I, I ask to the inhabitants I invite, to help me, because I, I'm not able to, to create a real complexity. And they always answer very, very patiently. <coughs> I reversed the, the thing, it's difficult to explain, but uh, architecture is not the construction of an object, of a beautiful object. The more Miss Van der Rohe works, the more it is a beautiful object. And the more is, it is strange and enemy of the culture of the people, it's like that. He was not worrying, but I am. So the culture of the people, the different culture, uh, are substance for an architect. And if by components, all those group of plants of the garden, all, or all those a group of inhabitants in a form may survive with their authenticity and create themselves the form of the neighborhood. They are, they have underneath f floods of uh, uh, energy uh, canals that makes typology living. I bet on that. It's not chaos, it doesn't exist. Even the, the, sh the Shantitans are not chaotic. And uh, I prefer the Joseph Bur uh, Boyce attitude, saying that everything that is uh, everyday things are sacred and are piece of art. I say the poverty, the conflicts of the people are a substance for architecture, not a circumstance which is outside the pure preoccupation, but a, a constituent uh, substance of an architecture. And you, you always guess that there is something behind. It's empty, as a philosopher said, but there is someone. And then you have, I bet you have a, an, an unlimited profession. You have an unlimited job. You may always go deeper and more complex. 
and let people show, their, show you their complexity. It's a, the people are substance also. Yeah, all the differences. Yes, but I feel that demolishing is uh, a fault, is a defeat, is very bad. Enhancing with the people, with their richness, is a way. Uh, I can't say it's the way, but I don't know any other. Demolishing, now you pay a lot of money, uh, more than what you did pay for the construction, probably, and then you have nothing well, economically speaking, but you have nothing culturally speaking. What do you do then? Call the people, do it with, the, with them, but call them immediately without demolishing. They will transform it. And a citizen that has uh, realized his program with other is not the same as the one who lives in a hated uh, neighborhood. Not, not possible to, uh, to be uh, <coughs> improved just repaint it and people see every time they repaint something after 20 years of no paint uh, within within five years it's worse than before why it's not an answer no. it's interesting is that you, you get the people involved and I think I think that's a very important part because after all it's there it's their space, it's their place of living, it's their culture, it's their little things which is so important to them, which sometimes one difficult to even understand. And I should imagine, as a designer, I think it's a very important part that you do work with them. Yeah. And I've had that experience, I know. But probably <coughs> it's not a perfect solution, ne necessarily. No, nothing is perfect. But at least you have a direction which is different than that uh, frigid principles called uh, rational as they have never been rational. They have been abstract. It's a cheated name. I, I don't see the rationality. Normally they explain that you have a house with a flat roof and generally you have a hole there who leads the water on the carpet of the living room. That's the definition of the technique. If you put a, a roof, a, a, a normal roof, you are accused of romanticism and nostalgia, but the, the rain goes outside. Well, what is rational? It's a, a terrible uh, ideology that made, that made that. Prefabrication has never been uh, less expensive than uh, traditional things. Never. And if you count it on the life cycle, it's certainly never true. different kind of angle, wasn't it? I mean, this whole idea of the attrition of modernism, um, the repetition of, 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 of subject matter, the framework, the ideological attitude that uh, prevails in so many of these sad places. I think what's fascinated me over the years watching Lucien Kroll's work is not just the continuity of his ideas, which are 
I do have a bit of a problem with um, from a formal point of view, and I think other critics do as well. But the way in which that continuity has been focused on the issues of the inadequacy of the great housing program in the post-war period, which produced a kind of sameness, a kind of arid desert of individualized units which had no individuality, had bad maintenance, bad services, and all of those things which have led to this desire to recover. But now the thinking also is getting more refreshing, and I think you'll see a bit in the exhibition I mentioned to you earlier at the Volume Gallery, and that is this idea of spontaneity, that you can actually resolve some of the problems by engaging in a spontaneous way of trying to heal some of those issues and create an architecture out of it which is focused on the issues of those people who live in those sort of places. And this spontaneity is something that is very unusual, I think, in the European context. It seems to me to be very usual in the Japanese context, where you get whole cities that appear to be spontaneous growths of units of accommodation and land and so on, which achieve some of the sim uh, some similar results. So there's a lot to be learned here, a lot to be thought about. And uh, it's most refreshing, Lucien, that you've taken us down this road once again. More power to your elbow. Thank you very much indeed.